Hey, so by the end of this video, you're going to know how to print out a string of text onto the screen character by character, like this. Okay, so here we are in Unity. The first thing we want to do is create some place for the text to actually print. So let's go over to the hierarchy, right click, go down to UI and text, text mesh pro. Uh, this is just a component that lets you display text on the screen. So click import TMP essentials. Okay, and now we're going to just resize it and move it to our liking. Yeah, there we go. By the way, if you ever want to focus on something like this canvas, which holds the text, for example, you can select the thing and then press F and it will resize it to that thing. Also the same with the text, I can zoom in on it by pressing F. Works in the 3D view as well with objects and whatnot. Okay, now I'm just going to add a component on here called text printer. And as the name implies, it's going to be a component that <laughs> prints the text for us. So let's just double click that now to open it in our code editor. Okay, so here we are. First things first, I'm going to get rid of this update method because we won't need it. I'm also going to get rid of this comment because it's useless. And we need to be using TM Pro. Uh, which is the namespace that holds all of the classes and stuff to do with TextMesh Pro. Um, now we need actually a reference to that TextMesh Pro that we just set up. So we're going to say tmp underscore text. Uh, let's just call it subtitle text mesh. Okay. And then we're going to create an awake method. This just gets called once, uh, similar to start, but before start most of the time. And under here, we're just gonna say subtitle text mesh equals get component and then TMP underscore text. So we're just gonna look through the components that are attached to this game object and try and get one that's of the type TMP text. Okay, so that's assigned that for us. And now I'm just going to show you how to change the text that's in the text box there. So we'll say subtitle text mesh dot text equals this, whoa caps, this is the line to print. Okay. Pretty simple. There's better ways to do it actually, more cost efficient ways, let's say, but I want to keep it simple. Okay, so let's see what happens when we actually run our game. So as you can see, this is the line to print is now in the text area. So the only thing now is that we need to print out each character one by one. We don't want to have the whole thing there. So let's have a look about how we would do that. In order to be able to print text on the screen in this way, we'll first need to get each character of the text. In C Sharp, a string can be thought of as the entire text, but it can also be treated as an array of characters. Each character can be accessed by simply using the index representing the position of the character in the text. So as you can see here, each index is linked to a character in the sentence. But if we could find a way to loop through each character in the string and then print out each character one by one on the screen, well, that solves our problem, right? But how do we do it? Okay, so back in our code editor, I'm just going to say string and text to type. And we're going to set that to uh, this is the line to print. Okay, so that's our target text, if you will. Okay, so now in start, I'm going to show you one way that you could do this and then a much better way of doing it. So first off, what I want to do is clear all of the text that's already there. So I'm going to say subtitle text mesh dot text equals string dot empty, which will just set it to nothing. And then I'm going to say subtitle text mesh dot text plus equals, okay, text to type zero. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to type the first character of our text to type, which is T onto the text. And I'll do the same with the rest.
Okay, so as you can see, this is a fucking mess, but it will work. Let's have a look. There you go. Now you might be saying to yourself, why didn't this print out slowly over time? Well, we'll get into that. But first, I want to show you a better way of looping over things. Okay, so instead of this whole mess we've created, let's try and do something a bit more elegant. So we're going to delete all of these. So we're going to be using something called a for loop. It may look really tricky when you're first starting, but it's honestly really dead simple once you get used to it. So we say for int i equals zero, i less than text to type dot length, and then i plus plus. So let's have a look at the syntax here. So the first part, we create a variable, a temporary variable that will be used for this for loop. So we say int i equals zero. Uh, i less than text to type dot length. So this is a condition. It says, as long as this part in the middle is true, I'm gonna do the thing on the right. So just to reiterate, we set up a variable, we check a condition against that variable, and then we decide something to do after the condition is still true. So I plus plus, which means it will go from naught to 25, which is the length of the string. Okay, just to show you a bit more concretely the relationship between the indices and the characters of the string, I'm gonna do a log here. We're gonna say log. I'm gonna say I plus, just an empty space, plus, uh, text to type i. So this will show us the number in the loop we're on, so which iteration of this loop, and then it will show us the character associated with that index. So let's have a look. So as you can see, each index is associated with one character, including spaces. So to print out each character, all we need to do now is say subtitle text mesh dot text plus equals text to type I. Okay, now let's have a look. And as you can see, this is the line to print has once again been printed. Okay, so that's great. But how do we wait between each typed character? Well, let me show you. So ordinarily code is run sequentially from top to bottom, but the computer will try and run it as fast as it can possibly do it. So if we wanna actually wait, we need to tell the program that we should wait. And the way to do that in Unity is using something called coroutines. So this will look confusing again at first, but you'll get used to it pretty fast. So we're gonna say I enumerator and then we're going to call it something like type text co, just so that we know it's a coroutine. Okay. Yield return null. Now, this is the part that's going to make you scratch your head, but we'll get into it. Okay. Trust me. Now, we're going to copy our loop from here. In fact, we're going to copy this whole part from start, and we're going to pop it in here. So if I wanna wait between each character being typed, all I need to do is underneath here, where we actually add the character to the text, we say yield return new, wait for seconds, and then we're gonna wait for like 0 0.05 seconds, F at the end because it's a floating decimal point. Okay, so now in start, I'm gonna say start coroutine. You can't just call the method like usual. So you say start coroutine type text co, okay? So as soon as we start, we start the coroutine and then this will happen. So let's have a look now. I'm gonna hit play. So as you can see, everything was typed out character by character. But how exactly does this work? Well, let's have a look. So I'm not gonna get too much into coroutines here, 
but I'll just show you what's happening. So we're setting our text to empty right at the start. Then we get into our for loop. We iterate over each character. And then before we go to the next index, we wait for 0.05 seconds. Okay, so it goes like this. It comes down, it waits, it jumps back up, it comes down, it jumps back up. And at the bottom here, we say yield return null. We could also do another wait for seconds here if you want, but this just says basically throw it back, we're done. Okay, so then it would exit the coroutine. You can also make kind of long lists of these if you want to, or long sequences, I should say. Let's say, let's just log a high after here, then yield return new wait for seconds. Let's just wait for like one whole second here. And then I'm going to log again and just say buy, for example, and then yield return new wait for seconds. And then let's say 0 0.5. And let's see what happens then. So as you can see, this is all happening in a sequence and it, it's all waiting at the time that it's supposed to. So I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. On the next one, I'm going to show you how to get a character to walk up to an object and then to print some text specific to that object. So I hope you stick around for that. And if you've got any questions, leave them down there in the comments. Uh, I offer game dev tutorials as well as game dev tutoring. So if you're interested in that, get in contact with me. Okay, goodbye.